So what do we have here today? We have the Raspberry Pi 400 keyboard. This is a complete computer minus the monitor. What we'll go over in today's video is what comes inside the box, the specifications of the machine, how to set it up, and possibly some of the top uses for the Pi 400. The specifications of this is it has an ARM processor clocked in at 1.8 gigahertz, four gig of RAM, somewhat disappointed that it doesn't come with eight, Wi-Fi 802.11ac, Bluetooth 5.0. If we take a look at some of the connectivity on this, there's a gigabit ethernet port, one USB 2, two USB 3, one USB-C power port, two micro HDMI ports, which support 4K at 60 frames per second, a micro SD card slot, and a GPIO pin. Before we jump into getting it set up, let's talk prices. You can buy this keyboard standalone or as a kit that I have in front of me here today. In the US, it's $97 for the keyboard itself or $124 for the kit. And in the UK, it's £80 for the keyboard and £90 for the full kit. For that little bit more, I think it's worth getting the full kit. What it contains is the Raspberry Pi 400 keyboard, USB mouse, SD card, HDMI cable, and a beginner's guide. Let me show you how simple and easy it is to set up, and then we'll go ahead and get it connected. One of the main things I wanna see is whether this can replace a desktop. So let's give that a go. Once I get this set up, we'll try web browsing, YouTube, office productivity, and see how we get on with Zoom and Teams meetings. Other than what I'm gonna show you today, there are hundreds of different uses for this. You can run Minecraft on here, or even a Minecraft server. You can run RetroPie, Developers use this for their development. You can run Windows 10 on this. There's a Pi 400 Amiga. There's so many different use cases for this. So it's a very useful machine for less than hundred pounds. As I mentioned at the start, this is the personal computer kit. So let's go ahead and open this up. We have the white Raspberry Pi keyboard, which is similar to the keyboard itself. A um, little bit of weight to it, which you would expect as it comes with a computer built into it. So the ports that I mentioned earlier on the back just here, the SD card is pre-built in. So it is removable, but it's already built into it. And the GPIO pins are just here. Inside the box, you then have the Raspberry Pi mouse. You then have the USB-C power cable. We have a micro SD to SD card adapter. If we lift this last bit up, we have the mini micro HDMI to HDMI cable there and you have a beginner's guide now this is the first time I'm unboxing this so I've not actually gone through this but from what I've heard this is actually very useful this book so if you haven't if you are buying one of these just do read about it and it tells you a little bit about what there is in here it tells you about getting to know your Raspberry Pi getting started using it programming using Python and yeah, it tells you about the camera module as well. I do have a camera module, so I will be doing a video on that shortly. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I will do something on that a little bit later. So that's everything that comes in the box. Now to get it set up is fairly easy. You plug in your HDMI cable into a monitor, you plug in your mouse and you plug in the power and then you turn it on and away we go. It's that simple. So. I'll give you a quick demonstration on how to do that. So we have our three things just here. So in this one just here is your power cable and you would plug that straight into there and that's that one. You would plug your micro HDMI in, which is just here. So that's that bit done. And then you just plug your mouse in using one of the USB ports, which is just here. And there we go. That is the three cables you need to get set up and going. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and um, we'll see you on the computer. I have my Raspberry Pi plugged into my cam link, um, which is obviously behind me on the screen at the moment. So we've got this set up. It's not running, it was running at 4K, which you wouldn't have been able to read. So I've changed it to 1920 by 1080. Um, hopefully you can read this a little bit better, but you hit function and F10 to get the machine booted up and you're granted with this screen straight away. So it has Raspbian already installed um, and your full desktop experience. So then we, what we do, let's go through the setup, let's click next. It's asking you what your keyboard layout is. Next, 
um, create a password. So for the default Pi account, you want to create a password. So let's just type that in. There we go. We'll click next. So you can actually see at the moment that around the screen, there is actually black edges. So um, the screen shows a black border. So we click next and it's going to go off and search for networks now. So it's found the network. So I'm just going to join the guest network with this device next. Now at this point, if you do have an ethernet connection, it's obviously not going to ask you this, just plug your ethernet cable in and away you go. And it's going to now go off and do some software updates. We're now going to reboot this and let this go. I'm hoping by then the screen's going to fill up the gaps and we'll come back after the reboot. So we're now back. You can see the edges have actually disappeared now as well, which is really good. So let's start by having a look at the internet. So we have the Chromium web browser. So as far as web browsing goes, if we go to our favorite search engine, load that, it seems to be fairly responsive. Um, obviously this isn't anything too intense. We're just reading some, we're just reading some information. Yeah, I mean, it all seems to be okay. Uh, if we go and watch this, for example. So I think that's just behind me. So if we go ahead and click play, you can see that this is running perfectly fine. Not sure if you can actually hear the audio, but the playback seems to be fairly smooth. Yeah, so um, yeah, that seems to be fairly smooth. Um, obviously, let, we can put that a little bit more to the test. Let's go to youtube.com. I don't want to get done for copyright here, so let's try and play some uh, royalty-free copyright-free videos. So you can see it's currently set at 720 at the moment. We're going to push that to 1080 just to see if anything drops. It's going to load in the background. Let's full screen it. There you go. There's a few. It does jitter a little bit. Don't forget it is a small form factor compact machine. Um, so it does jitter a little bit, but it seems to be playing perfectly fine. And if I increase the speed to two times, it seems to be playing perfectly fine in terms of this. I'm, I'm fairly happy with that in terms of how that runs. One thing to do, one thing to note that obviously with this machine, there is no three and a half millimeter jack to plug in your speakers, but you can plug in a USB headset um, with a microphone and that will act as your phone speakers. If you have speakers built into your monitor, the sound can travel through the HDMI as well. So the next thing I want to have a quick look at is the uh, a speed test. Um, uh, I want to have a look at a speed test. So this is running an 802.11ac. On my machine here, I know I can get three to 400 megabits per second on my MacBook Pro, um, but let's see what we can get in terms of this. So. We're getting 65 megabits per second. It's not bad for a small machine. It's going to do what you need it to do. It's going to browse the internet. It's going to run your meetings, whatever you need it to do. The upload, I don't get more than 40-ish anyway, so I don't really expect it to be much higher than that. So in terms of internet speed, it's not too bad. Um, obviously, it's not got a Wi-Fi 6 enabled card, um, but it will give you a decent internet connection. The other thing is checking your email. So this has a uh, clause mail client on it. You can set yourself up a, a client. So you type in your name, email address, etc., etc., and that'll obviously start syncing your emails. Not going to do that on here, but you get the idea of how that works. The other thing in terms of day-to-day -day usage is is Office productivity. Within here, you have uh, Libra Office. You go ahead and type whatever you, you want to do and you can go ahead and save the document. So again, if you have some cloud storage, you can save it to that. You can save it as any of the following word, uh, any of the following formats. Uh, the other thing I wanted to try is using Office Online. I've gone ahead and opened Office Online on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, as you can see, it's not available natively, but you can work with it in the browser and it is fairly similar to using the actual version. So from a day-to-day -day perspective, if you needed to edit a quick document or do some Excel work or even presentations, whatever it might be, I think this would be a really good alternative. So there you go. So it's just as just like using an Office document and it will be the same with the Excel, just as you would. Uh, presentations, exactly the same. And the other thing I wanted to check was Microsoft Teams. This is quickly loading in the background. I just want to see how this runs if I'm able to set up a meeting and to see how it would work. 
I had to quickly unplug my camera for this part of the demo. I've gone ahead and clicked meet now and you can see in the top left hand corner up here it says allow teams to use your microphone and camera so let's click allow. You can see I've got my headset on, um, it's working if I click join now, it's working as it should be. From an everyday office perspective, um, if you had meet, Zoom meetings, team meetings, whatever it might be, uh, this would be perfectly fine. Um, and it would do the job for you. There doesn't seem to be, I can move my webcam around, there doesn't seem to be any jittering or anything like that. So um, this does the job. The other thing is when I plugged in my headset, I don't, don't know why I've got this on still. Um, when I plugged in my headset, um, I didn't actually install any drivers, even for the camera, I just plugged it in and it works straight away. So it's all plug and play which is really useful um, and helpful for something like this scenario. Just put my camera back now. So um, you can hear that I'm talking and it's saying down here that the uh, microphone is muted. So that's purely because it is picking up my audio. So that's definitely video audio that's working perfectly fine. So I'm really happy with this in terms of productivity. That will do what we need it to do. And if I show you the task manager, yes, the CPU does go up and down, but I mean, we're not using that much memory. We're using a, a about 25% of what's available. One last thing I wanted to show you was the games. So there are some games on here as well. Um, never actually played any of these, uh, so I'm not sure how, so I'm not sure I'd be very good at them. Um, but let's just have a quick look at this one. Um, I can actually, I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear the, uh, I can hear the sound through the headphones. So again, just to prove that the sound's working. Again, I'm sure I'm gonna be at this, but. There you go, that shows how good I am at this game. Hey, you see that the games actually work on here as well. Overall, if you ask me, would I replace my day-to-day -day computer with this? For just basic browsing, productivity, meetings, this is perfectly fine. I can do everything that I need to do within the computer and it has everything built in for less than $100. Uh, the only thing extra yet you would need is basically a monitor, maybe some headphones and uh, a webcam if you wanna do that. Is it the quickest machine? Is Am I gonna replace my MacBook Pro? Of course not, because it's probably got, it's got a lot more memory in it, it's a lot more powerful. I need to be able to do video editing, photo editing, and all that sort of stuff. So it's not gonna replace my my actual main machine, but if it's something that I need on the side for something, for something this small and light, um, this would definitely do the job for me. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know down in the comments below if you'd replace your machine with this, or even if you have, what are you using it for? The links for the products are in the description below, so feel free to check them out. They are linked to my Amazon affiliate and they help me out to bring you more videos like this. This is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.